and see that, how purpose was discovered. People came into the knowledge of who they were. They came to the understanding that they were packed with power when the fellowship of believers came together. And that's what is happening this morning. And every morning that you participate in the ecclesia, you find your purpose. Yes. You find your strength in the fellowship of believers. There's a powerful thing that happens when believers, I'm not just talking about Sunday saints just gathering together. I'm talking about people that are operating in faith. When they gather together, there is a power that happens where literally you feel a strength that you didn't feel yesterday. You feel something that awakens and refreshes you. I feel the Holy Spirit there. Somebody needs to know that, yeah. that. That's why you're coming to church because coming to church empowers you yes, Lord. with the newness of who you are yeah. becoming more and more. Yeah. You haven't arrived yet. Paul said, not that I've already attained it or was already made perfect. He said, but I press forward that I may apprehend. He knew that there was an apprehension that was still yet available in all of his intelligence and spiritual revelations and that deep abiding relationship he had with the Lord, he knew there was even yet more. Wow. So no matter where you are, you could be at the beginning of your journey with God, or you could be in the middle, or some of you are in the fourth quarter. And either place, wherever you are, there's always another level of revealing, another level of hope, another level of faith, another experience that is greater than the last. Yeah, yeah. Because God is greater. And he's bringing you into greatness. David said in Psalm 71, 21, Lord, you shall increase my greatness. Increase my greatness. I don't want to be the same as I was yesterday. I want every day from my life to be greater and greater and greater. And I pray that that is what you want also for your life. is a fulfillment of more of God and more of his purpose and a revealing of more of the intentionality of God for your life. Yes. Yes. When God created you, he created a masterpiece. Come on. Mm -hmm. He yes. created that thing. <laughs> Breathe the breath of life into it. Yes. Purposed it. He had already purposed it. So when the breath came in, so did the purpose. Jesus. Woo. Jesus. Jesus. He had already purposed Jesus. your purposes in life. And so when he breathed the breath of life into yeah. you, your purpose who was breathed also. Wow. And your purpose came alive Amen. with your breath, the breath of God in you. Amen. Amen. And so this morning we want to encourage you and talk to you about the thing that is the most important thing, aspect of your walk with God, and that is faith. Amen. That's the most important aspect Amen. of your walk with God is your faith. Yes. The Bible says without it, it is impossible to please God. Mm. In verse 11, 6. For those who come to God must believe that he is. First thing is that he is. He is what? He is everything I need. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. This morning the Lord was showing me a principle as I was getting dressed. He said, it is impossible to diligently seek me and not find me. And he said, the more you diligently seek me, the more me you, the more me you find. Yes. And the ones that diligently seek me through obedience is the ones that get more of Come on. this experience yeah. with me. There are people say, God, I want more of you, but they won't even do with the first thing that God right. called them to do. Right. And the Lord said, Do you think it's a, do you think it's possible for you to have the same kinds of blessings and favor and reward that maybe somebody like Pastor Irma has, who is diligent yes. to all the things that he calls her, yes. to, her to? She can be tired. In her physical body, and yet she will still do the up. things Amen. that God has asked her to do. Amen. She'll still go pick up people. She'll yes. still get her around. Yes. She'll Amen. show up at this church. She's the first one here and the yes. last one to leave. That yes. kind of diligence yes. God rewards. Yes. Because she's not seeking yes. to please man. Yeah. Her Come seeking, on. her diligence is to please God. On, and it does, and he yes. rewards her yes. greatly yes. because of that diligence. Yes. I'm telling you that because you've got to be diligent. In your pursuit of God, you've got to be steadfast in your pursuit of God. And I'm not telling you to be something you can't be. I'm telling you to be who you already are in Christ. Yeah, it's who you are. God will move on your tired 
darkness and awaken you with energy to do something you didn't think you could do. Have you ever been so tired? You're just like, I don't have another step to go. And, and all of a sudden, an awakening comic God tells you, hey, I need you to do this, and you're capable of doing it. I'm telling you that because as I was, when the Lord told me that this morning, um, he was talking to me about Pastor's Ernest's diligence. Mm. And it's very few people I know with that level of diligence. Amen. Mm. She has just Amen. such a heart to, sure. to please the yes. Lord. Mm -hmm. And she does that through service to God, Amen. which you are all benefactors of. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we went camping, our leadership team, and we liked to, we, we, yeah, we went hiking. Yes. Did I say camping? camping? Oh, yeah, hiking. <laughs> I want to go camping. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can't go. So uh, we're going to wait. <laughs> we love to camp and we love to hike. We're, we're a people that love to keep our temples fit for the Lord. And so Amen. God has called us to do more of that. Our leadership team yesterday, we did a baptism and it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was. We baptized was. one person yesterday Whoa. morning and it was like a Incredible. multitude right? of yeah. the host yeah. of angels showed yeah. up for one. So God is important. Oh, God. understood the principles of baptism. Whatever it is, it can be one person, it can be 25 people, it can be 100 people. The one is just as important yeah, to God yeah, as 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yesterday morning we baptized this woman and it was just a beautiful experience. The heavens opened up and God has just been blessing us through baptisms every Saturday morning at 9. So if you have not been baptized or you need to be re-baptized, you need to bury that old man because baptism is being buried with Jesus and rising and his resurrection power. Yesterday morning as we did that, it was just wonderful. Afterwards, we had breakfast and we went up to Mount Charleston to go hiking. And it was just so wonderful. We took a couple of our, our team that had not hiked, uh, someone on our team had never ever hiked before. And so we just encouraged her that you can do this, God's got you. And we took a hiking trail to Cathedral Rock. Well, we thought it was uh, a mile, but it turned out to be five. <laughs> and it was all uphill. It was like one of the hardest climbs. And I'm a, I'm a hiker. I can, I'm pretty good at hiking, but that one challenged us. Even my husband, he's good at hiking, but that one challenged us. We were, we were, uh, it was a struggle to get to the top. But we had the faith that God had called us to do it, so we made it to the top. Some of our, uh, our team stayed uh, at another spot because they got there and they realized that that was too strenuous and they, had, they did not have the stamina, the physical stamina, although they had the spiritual heart to do it, they did not have the physical stamina yet because they're going to be getting these temples in shape. Amen. Yes. Amen. And this, so that they can get to yeah. the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. We got, we did make it to the top and it was a, it was an effort with the, with the four of us uh, to make it to the top, the four of us that got to the top. It was really strenuous and uh, we got to the top and it was beautiful. It was worth the view. Because we got to the top and you could see 40 miles from where you were. I, I felt like I had the eyes of an eagle to be able to see beyond where I could normally see. I could see the rooftops. Most people want to get to the rooftop, we got above the rooftops. So. We were so high up there, it was like where the angels were. So when they just landed. And we enjoyed the, the afternoon up there. And we had lunch. I made us sandwiches, and so we had lunch up at the top. Oh, nice. Enjoyed the time up there. Took pictures. I wanted to show it to you guys. And we were journey, journeying back down. And as we're journeying back down, Pastor Irma started to have some physical problems. And uh, because she's a fighter, she wouldn't let him stop her. Like we kept stopping, you okay, you got it? Yeah, we had to stop for a minute and, and let her work through it. She was having some severe cramping, severe. It was like a dehydration had hit her body. and It was just an attack of the enemy, but she's a fighter, so she kept going, she kept going, and we get down to the mountain. So a certain point, and we meet our, the rest of our team, and we talk about what God said while we were up in the mountains, and they told us they had had an experience too. Because while we were in the mountains, Someone blew a shofar. Yes. 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 The sound of the shofar blew yes. twice. twice. We got to the top of the mountain. We're about to come back down. We heard a shofar. We're like, whoa, that's a shofar. And we're looking. We couldn't see anything or anybody. And as we're journeying back now, it sounded again. It was the sound of heaven. And, and it had to be supernatural, but it was a perfect sound. 
And so we get to our team and we, we meet with them and we talk about the experiences that we had had, the spiritual experiences, and both of us had had spiritual experiences. As we're going down the mountain, we get in the car and we're headed down the mountain, we stop at the resort where we're having the marriage retreat. We get out the car and uh, Pastor Irma is usually the first one to lead the way. You know, she's a forerunner and this thing hit her body so hard, yeah. she literally could not function. Her legs went numb. She is not the type of person that the devil will push down. She'll be like, devil, uh-uh, I ain't, I ain't, oh, 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 no, 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 oh, no, 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 but she was on the ground. Yes. And we just, it, it almost drew a panic, you know, because she's like, she's a general. When a general go down, the troops be like, oh Lord, help me. Yeah. So the Lord said, get the, get the oil. I got the anointing oil. Someone gave me the oil and I anointed her. And she stood back up and she was like, I got it, I got it. And I said, wait, wait, let's pray. And I prayed. I put my hand on her chest and it felt like her heart was going to jump out of her chest. As if you know the enemy was attacking our heart, and the, and the Lord said, "Call the paramedic." So I read. I said, "Pastor, Irma, I have to call the paramedic. I, I've got. We've got to get you some help. Uh, I can't get down this mountain quick enough." That's my best friend. So you know, I'm like, "You're about to take out my best friend." That's right. I have to do it. So I, I run my car to get my cell phone. She's like, "No, no, no, I, I got it." I got it. And, and my husband said, "Let's just get her in the car and get down the mountain." I said, "Okay, we're going to Centennial." A hospital, so we. St I'm driving. I was man. I was like speed racer. I'm telling you, y'all passing. I could be a race car driver. Yeah. I was driving that truck like it was a Corvette, right? Going past people. Go away. My husband was like, slow down. I'm like, I got this. My friend, you just broke her legs. Help us. So we get as we're going down. We get on the uh, 95, and she's like, I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna go to the hospital. Was gonna call her son and her family, and then she says, "No, no, 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 it's easy enough." Cause in the car, while we're going down, I had to drive really fast. I said, "Everybody pray." We all just went up in tongues, and we all just started rebuking the devil. We all started making prophetic declarations and saying what the Word of God says, and it was really powerful because the heavens came into the car, and you could feel it. Like at first, it was intensity, like, yeah. "Oh my God!" But then you could feel it. You could feel yeah. that 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 power of God oh, manifest. Yes. Power, yes. Yeah. And then the pain started to ease up, right? So I said, okay, we're going to Centennial. She said, no, 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 it's easing up. I'm going to be all right. And I said, no, no, I think we ought to just, let's just go to the hospital with you. No, 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 just stop at the health food store and get some stuff. And we did that. The Lord gave us what to get at the health food store. And we got it, and she took it. And she's here this morning. Amen. Amen. You're not going to church in the morning. <laughs> and the rest of the team said, you stay at home and rest. And she said, y'all got to be crazy. <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. I said, I'm telling you to stay home. She said, I'm telling you. No disrespect of possible. <laughs> now, what the Lord showed us from that experience is, in order to get through those kind of traumas, you have to have mountain moving faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have to be able to speak to that thing and yeah. believe what you're saying mm -hmm. that it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Because we saw the manifestation of yeah. it. I know had yeah. we taken her to the hospital, they probably would have kept her overnight because her heart was beating that fast. I thought the enemy was trying to take her out. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord said it was because of our faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we believed and yes. she believed. Amen. Yeah. I mean, her legs was yeah. numb. We literally had to pick them up and put them in the car. That's how bad it was. It was a 911 situation. And you know when the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy yeah. because he he like he takes you out. Mm -hmm. He takes your ability to function. And so this morning we want to talk to you guys about mountain moving faith. Yeah. yeah. It's important that your faith is not shaken in this hour because if your faith is shaken, so will your life. The Bible says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And faith will stand in a storm. Faith will stand when nothing else is standing. Faith will stand. That means faith is what you believe. In its simplest form, it's what you believe. If you believe you're healed, don't act sick. Come on. If you believe you're rich, don't act poor. If you believe you're made whole, don't be divided. That's what 
the Lord said, if you believe you're honored, don't act in dishonor. Yeah. Come on. If you believe you're great, don't act small. Yes. Because every time you act contrary to what you believe, it nullifies your faith. Come on. Nullifies your faith. It's important that you believe and then you stand firm on it. Yes. Now, the moment you say, I believe I'm healed, and you're standing firm on that healing, you're going to feel a twitch. Uh -huh. You're going to feel a pain. Yes. You're going to feel some symptoms. Yes. But don't believe the symptoms. They're the natural thing that the enemy yes. is trying to use to nullify your faith and get you to doubt. Come on. And the moment you doubt, you go into a, a level of hopelessness. Yeah. And he wants to make you hopeless and hopeless and hopeless and hopeless until you're completely hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. Just taking you, diminishing your faith because the enemy knows that your faith is what keeps you Come on. moving. Come on. Right. Your faith yeah. is your yeah. promise. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Faith and the promises are connected together. Without, the, without faith, you cannot have the promise. Without faith, you cannot have the things that God has promised you. Without faith, you can't get the things want to get. Right. You can't do the things you want to do. It all requires that you believe. Yes. And this morning we're going to challenge you to believe God at a higher level yes. because the more you believe God for, the more you can have. God can only give you that which you have enough faith to receive. Come on. Amen. And the faith issue is it's very controversial because there are pastors that believe the moment you get saved, you have all the faith you need. And then there are pastors that believe faith is ever increasing. Yes. We're not here to debate with anyone. Right. We're here to say, thus says the Lord. Right. We're going to give you biblical principles that tell you yes. what faith does. Come on. Amen. Faith is what you believe. Mm -hmm. What faith does is what we're, going to do, what we're going to give you the revelation of this morning. Yeah. So I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 12. 21, Ooh. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 21 is where we're going to start. And Pastor Zach is going to help bring this thing Amen. home so we all leave here with understanding. Yes. Yes. Matthew chapter 21 is where we're going to start. We're going to start in verse 18 of Matthew 21. Here's what it says in the New King James Version of Matthew 21, starting at verse 18. Now, in the morning... As he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So soon, how did it happen that quickly? Come on now, Lord. That's a word for somebody. Come on. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if your faith, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Whatever things you ask in prayer, that means whatever things you talk to God about. Whatever things you talk to God about. Prayer is that communion, that time that you have with God. And prayer is not just asking God. Prayer is waiting on the answer from God. And those are the things that you're going to receive. Faith is about praying, it's about believing, and it's about receiving. Yes, yeah. There are different levels of faith. There is Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. He tells his disciples, oh, you of little faith. Come on. Little faith means I, I, I don't believe God enough to receive something that's beyond my comprehension. I don't believe God to receive something that's beyond my comprehension. That's little faith. The beauty of the word of God and God's promises for us is if you have mustard seed faith, uh -huh. that means just a, a faith that is so small that you yeah. can't even see it, but you know it's there. Because faith isn't about what you see. Faith is that inner knowing of, yeah. that's what belief is, that inner knowing that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that this is true. Amen. Amen. And just a little faith 
People are worried about faith. It's not the issue of faith. It's the issue of believing. Right. Because people get stuck on the faith and they're so worried about faith. Do you have faith? I don't have enough faith. I didn't get healed because I had faith. No, no, no. You're directing your energy toward the wrong thing. You're directing your energy at faith rather than directing your energy at the God who answers because of faith. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Don't direct all of your energy at, oh, I didn't have enough faith to get that. Or I missed that moment because I didn't have enough faith. I messed up it because of my faith. Stop focusing on the faith and focus on the God who gives faith. Yeah. Because he knows how to increase your faith according to the desires of your heart. He said, if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. God knows how to increase your faith so that you get to a point where you can receive the things that you, that you so desire and that he desires for you. Remember, thank you, Holy Spirit, this is a partnership. Come on. Yes. This is a partnership. Yes, it is. It's not a one-sided relationship where God give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It's a partnership. Lord, what do you want? Lord, this is what I want, but what's best? Because sometimes you want what's good and God wants to give you what's best. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you want what, what seems right and God wants to give you what's perfect. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. Jesus. Yes. yes. So partnering with God, this is a partnership. Zach and I are in a partnership. I don't make all the decisions about our marriage, neither does he. And when we both, when we try to do that, well, well, this is how we're going to do it. And we both uh, were staunch about it. No, this is how it's going to be done. We find ourselves in a conflict. But the moment we come into the partnership in the right. union and we agree upon something, power happens. Right. There's right. power in the in the agreement anointing. Yes. There's a the power of agreement is amazing because now you're saying, God, I don't want just what I want because oftentimes wanting what you want is about immaturity. Come on. Right, Come on. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You want to give you a, you want God to give you a car when God wants to give you a car lot. Right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And you can't see the car lot because you're focused on the car. <laughs> well, I don't have car light, a car lot anointing. I don't have a, enough anointing to get a business that big and not only own a car car lot, but own several. I don't have a, I don't have the faith to do that. God knows how to grow your faith. Do you know there are people get this, that have gone through seasons of complete lack? come out of that season because they believe God for yeah. something, uh -huh. for what God had shown yeah. them, not just for come what on. they wanted. They believe God for what God... Yeah. Thank you. Come There's on. a principle there. Believe God for what he shows Show you, yeah. not just for what you can work for. Jesus. Whoa. Come on, Jesus. That's good. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 believe God for what... The, the, here it is. Mm. Jesus says, whatever things you ask in prayer, when you're praying, you are communing with an eternal God that has a limitless supply. Wow. Right. A limitless supply. And because he has a limitless supply and he's eternal, that means having no end beginning and no ending, which means he's totally in charge of all the middle. Yeah. Right. When you believe God for what he shows you, he's showing you your possibilities, even though in the natural it seems like an impossibility. Jesus said with God, uh, all Mary said with God, all Believe God. Yeah. Just believe God. Stop believing yourself all the time. Believe in yourself. Believe what God has said to you. But oftentimes we start believing our own lies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got quiet in here on that one, did We start believing our own lies. We start believing the things that we think we must have because if I don't have this, my life won't turn out right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I don't have her, I just I I, I believe she's my wife. When she might not be your wife at all. It's just that you like her that much. Or I believe he's my husband. Women have chased after men that had no intentions of really doing right by them. Yep. And then they settle with these guys. And then they live a life that is unsatisfied, that is dissatisfying. Right. Yes. Because they didn't believe God for his best. They right. took what his was best. available. Oh. Jesus. Tell her truth. Best. Don't take what's yeah. available. Because what's available isn't always what's yours. Oh. So oftentimes, 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 God has so much more for you. Yes. 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 Faith yes. is not about settling. Come on. Amen. Faith is about advancing. Faith is an advancing yes. foreknowledge of what God has set before you yes. that is bigger than you. It's more than where you are right now, yeah. but it's yours because he will increase you. David said, thou enlarge me Woo! in my distress. Yeah. He will increase you at the worst times of your life. Come on, yeah. Jesus. Yes. Yes, 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 yes Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes,
So even if you have little faith, you still got faith. Come on. Yes. 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 you little faith. Ah, you little faith. Ah, you little faith. That's how the de devil does. Well, you ain't got as much faith as sister so-and-so. And you don't have as much faith as Smith Wigglesworth had. You don't have as much faith as, as Catherine Kuhn. You don't have well, you have faith, though. Come on. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, fact that yeah. you're sitting in the chair means you have some kind of faith that you're sitting in it without, yeah, you know, making right. sure all the screws were screwed in right. Come on. Right? You sit in without calling the manufacturer and asking them if the chair was made right. So you right. have some kind of faith. And you have faith in God. The fact that you got saved. Get this. Your faith is a supernatural thing. You did not get saved on your own. Come on. You did not just go to church Amen. one day and say, okay, I'm going to finally do right. You did that 10,000 times before you really got saved. Yeah. Right? You came and, okay, Lord, and then two days later you are, you tripped and you slipped. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ooh, I fell. <laughs> yeah. That happens. It's that time when your heart is so humble yes. and so ready to receive mm -hmm. the engrafted word of God that God stepped in and supernaturally gave you the faith to say yes to him. Yes. Your yes to God, your, your, your salvation experience is all supernatural. It wasn't because you were so brilliant. It was because of God's brilliance. Amen. So your little faith can still produce great results. Amen. Your Amen. little faith, believe that. And as you journey with God, as you walk in obedience, there are movements out there, you know, Christian movements out there that teach people that all you have to do is just have faith. There are other applications to faith. Amen. That's right. Meaning you, faith without works is dead. Yeah. So your faith has to have some application. Right. The, your faith has to have some obedience. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen just because I believe, yeah, that's the first step in your in your faith journey. And once you believe, now you receive. Uh -huh. yeah. Receive that which you believe. You, how do I receive it? I receive it because I say it's mine because that's what God said. That's it. And then I start living like I have it. Come on. That's it. Okay? Yeah. Then you start living like you have it. That's why if God says you're a business owner, start living like a business owner. Get, how do I do that, Pastor Kim? I'm glad you asked. You buy business books. You go to business seminars. You hang around business people. You get you a business mentor. You hang around people that are that have the things that you so desire. You God will bring them, and you don't have to go and just intensely look here and there and take any old body. No, you pray about that thing because that's what Jesus is saying here. Amen. When you pray, you pray about that. Lord, I need a mentor. I need a mentor that is doing this so I can see what that looks like in the natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sense to you? Yeah. 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 So faith. That's good. Faith, there is great faith. And Jesus talked about great faith. Great faith often happens as, as people mature in the Lord, mm -hmm. as people walk with the Lord, as people, the word becomes flesh in them. The word becomes your reality. Faith grows when you see stuff happen. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. Come on. yeah. Faith gets greater because you see the manifestation of God's promises. You see the manifestation of healing. Let one person you pray for get healed. Your faith going to go from zero from two to ten. Because it, it had to be beyond zero, right? So it's going to go from two to ten just because you saw somebody get healed. The moment I see people get healed, I get so excited because I know that faith had an activation. And, and, and not just only did God step in, but God stepped in because one, we declared it. And two, we believed it. And he manifested it. The first time I, I saw a woman get healed, I was preaching a three-day revival. And get healed when God used me. And this woman at this three-day revival was the first time I've ever preached a revival. When you preach your first revival, it's, it's really nervous. You know, you're really nervous because you want to do good, right? And, and, and I had never preached like that before a crowd like that. I was just doing Bible studies in my home. And so I'm doing this revival, and the woman comes up at the end when we have an altar call, and she says, uh, you know, I want to be, be healed. I said, okay. So we, we had a couple of our people pray for her. She rolled away from that altar. The second day, second night she came up, we had some of our team pray for her. She rolled away from that altar in the wheelchair. That third morning, the Lord had woke me up at th five o'clock in the morning and he had talked to me about that woman. He said, I wanna talk to you about the woman. He said, I'm going to heal her today, but it's gonna happen by faith. Do you believe that I can heal her? And I said, yes, Lord, I believe you can heal her. He said, then, I want you to connect your faith with her faith. Mm -hmm. 
Because if you're praying for someone and you have faith and they don't have faith, Jesus told everyone that he healed, thy faith has made you whole. It's because you believe what he said and you received it that you it manifested. Yeah. That you it, it inhabited you. You had it. So as I'm looking at this woman, I, I see I see her in the back and I'm preaching and the house is just going up. Everybody came with this expectation. When you come with an expectation, yeah, God meets you right there. If you come yeah, and believe I'm going to receive yeah. a word today, I need something from the yeah. Lord, and you come and pull on the Lord, you can even pull on the preacher. There are times yeah. when people are pulling on my anointing yeah. and I can feel it. I'm like, somebody's hungry in the audience. And God said, and I have deposited in you fresh yeah. bread for them. And they can pull it out of you. You can pull on the preacher and be like, you better preach that. Yeah. You better tell me what the Lord is saying. Preach, preacher. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're doing yeah. when you're pulling on the word. And what you're doing is you're receiving yeah. that which you are believing God for. Don't ever go to church with, without any expectation yeah. of God doing something oh, for yeah. you in That's church. Right. Don't ever go to a conference. Right. Don't waste your money. If you're not going to go with the expectation that something's going to happen for me, God's going to say something, he's going to do something, something's going to manifest, and I'm going to change. When you go with that kind of expectation, you've already put a demand on the anointing. Come on. My God. So we, this third day, this woman, the Lord's talking to me at 5 in the morning, and we get dressed, and we go to church, and we get there, and the woman's there, and we're, I'm preaching, and the house is just up, man. Everybody's on their feet. People are pulling, and I'm preaching like I didn't know I could preach that way. Yeah. And then we do the prayer. We do the altar call, and people come up, and, and we were believing God for healing. We're a healing ministry. We yeah. believe that yeah. the Lord is yeah. a healer. He is Jehovah yeah. Rapha. The Lord yeah. heals you. He has the power to turn yeah. a person's yeah. sickness yeah. Into, yeah. And, into a whole manifestation of wholeness. And we like to deal with the sickest of the sickest of the sick because it's not on us. Our faith draws that healing out of the realm of, of the spirit so the Father has access to do. He will do what your faith says. That's what he will do. He will do what your faith says. So that day my faith said she was healed. I walked in that place like it was already done. And when I seen her back there, I was preaching like, yeah, I was preaching to the enemy. Let him know, yeah, she's going to get healed. And she didn't know I was directly preaching at her, but I was preaching I was releasing that word. I was establishing it. What I was doing was setting up an atmosphere so that healing could manifest. I was releasing words of healing. When somebody is sick, you start to release words of healing. Because when your faith connects with the word, an, an application happens called manifestation or evidence happens. When your faith, God's word always works. But it, 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 it's activated. The word is always going to work. It's activated and given legality the moment you speak it. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, I believe and therefore I spoke. What am I speaking? I'm speaking what I believe. He said, and with the same faith, with the same belief, with the same faith, we also believe and therefore we speak. That's why I don't think prayer should always be a meditative stance. Oftentimes prayer should be a sound that's coming out of your atmosphere into the atmosphere so you're creating an atmosphere. If God says you're rich, create an atmosphere where wealth can manifest. Because Jesus spoke to that fig tree and because it wasn't producing at the capacity in which it had the ability to, he said, be done, dry up. And it said, and right away. So if Jesus can speak and right away something manifests, why can't you do it too? You can. He says that we are as he is. You can do the same thing. You can speak and a thing happens just like that. Amen. Amen. We think it's got to take 10, 20 years. No, you create an atmosphere. You create a greenhouse for your blessing. And I guarantee you, in the greenhouse, that thing, all you got to do is toss out a seed. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yes. Just create a greenhouse of faith. That's what faith is. It's a greenhouse. And it, you're building it because you're believing. And every time you believe God, that thing is increasing. When you're believing God for something, you're having the things right now. Everything that's in your life has showed up because you believe. Come on. Believe. Good or bad, yeah. whatever showed up in your life, you believe Come it. On. Well, no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. There was some ne negativity also has belief. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. That morning, I, I knew as a preacher because of, I, a tabernacle with the Lord. I had been in the presence of the Lord, and I knew 
that by faith we had to create an environment. Mm. That woman had been in that condition a long time. And it wasn't going to just be relinquished just like that. It was going to take some faith yeah. to abolish all the tentacles that the enemy had established in her body. Yeah. And so I was releasing words of faith before, she, before the altar call. By the time the altar call came, she rolled up there in her wheelchair. She rolled up there. And I'm looking at, I'm praying for people in like, yeah, in the name of Jesus, I'm looking at her like, yeah, 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 that's my real target right there. We'll help you, brother, but we don't get that right there. Today. That's gonna, uh, and so we pray for all these people, and she come up, and, and she stood there. I said, oh, I'll get you, I'll get you later. And so we're praying for people, and the altar is just packed because people are getting healed. They're getting delivered. Demons are coming out. You can just see it, man. It was powerful. It's powerful when you're standing in the yes, manifested yes, presence yes. of God, oh, watching yes. him do something yes. miraculous. It's so, it empowers you. You be like, whoa. Man, we would see somebody get healed. We look at each other like, whoa. Come on, God. What next? 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 Want to go over to the church across the street and be like, hey. So she, she, she's there, and, and so we're praying for people, and then all the people are prayed for, they're laying out, and I'm looking for the woman in the wheelchair, and she's not on the altar. I'm looking, and I can't see her. I said, Lord, did she leave? Did she think I wasn't going to pray for her? I'm looking around, and the Lord said, there she is. She was over there in the corner. I said, okay. He said, go get her. <laughs> I went back there. I walked back there. Boy, I was walking in big, big boots. I could yeah. see them. I was walking in, in big daddy boots, you know. Daddy Jesus, man. I had them big boots. I was walking. I got back there, and I said, the Lord woke me up at 5 o'clock this morning talking to me about you. And he says, today he's going to heal you. How long have you been in that wheelchair? She said, for 18 years. I said, do you believe God can heal you? She said, yeah. I said, then I believe. And he said, it's going to happen by faith. I'm connecting my faith. I believe. You believe? She said, yeah. I said, then I connect my faith with your faith. And by faith, I say to you, take up your bed and walk. And she was sitting there. She looked at me, and she stood up. She, her legs was trembling at first. She was shaking. And then I thought, what happened? <laughs> it was my first fish. I didn't know what to do with it. So, okay, I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do, Lord? And the Lord said, just step back. So I stood, I looked at her and I took a step back and I held out my hand. And when I held out my hand, she took a step. And I took a step and she took a step. And we just stepped all the way back. I walked backwards to the, to the altar. And we got on the altar. And I'm standing there. And I really did not know what to do. I mean, a miracle had manifested. And the church was in smokes. They were screaming and crying. The pastor was crying. His wife was crying. And, and I knew something big had happened. They had known this woman for a long time. She had been going to that church a long time. So I'm standing there. I look at my husband. And I'm like, what do we do? And so we, we anointed her. And then we're just standing there. And I, I said, OK, God, what do we do? And my husband said, well, we'll just uh, I'll go get a wheelchair. And she looked at my husband. She said, I don't walk back. <laughs> Just she pushed that wheelchair out of that church that day. Oh, Years Amen. later, I went back to that church. I said to the pastor, "How's the lady in the wheelchair?" He said, "Oh, she walking in the church." Every time. <laughs> she started out with a little walker. She would have got herself a little walk at the little thrift store down the street. So I went and got me a walker, and she walked with that walker for a minute, and then she got rid of that, and she was wow. walking in the church. He said that was a miracle. Now, what that miracle did was it took that church to another level in faith. Yeah. So you want to see the manifestations of miracles because yes. every time you see a miracle in your own life, it's good to read it in the Bible and it gets you excited and it shows you all the possibilities that are available to you. But what God wants to do mostly is he wants to do it through you and for you. He wants you to be the instrument of faith that he uses to bless somebody to get up out of a wheelchair, to bless somebody to come out of poverty, to bless somebody to be made whole. He wants you to be the instrument where he can. Word, 
Uh-huh. And they're having this constant conflict. Yeah. Oftentimes they're just saturated yeah. with demons. And in order for them to really be able to get a grab a hold of the word of oh faith, God. we first have to get them delivered. Yeah. And how we yeah. get them delivered yeah. is through faith. We speak yeah. to the devil and say, come out. That's right. And by right. faith, the devil know when you don't have no faith. Uh-huh. The devil be you that come out, demon, come out, demon. And the devil be laughing. <laughs> yeah, right. One night we were playing for a lady and, and uh, we're casting this spirit out. And there was one girl, she's just so loud, just always, just everything is, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. You know, one of them. And I'm just, you know, we're casting out. And she, come on, come on, that devil, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And she was standing behind me and it was really <laughs> getting on my nerves because it wasn't authentic, it wasn't real, and there was no power in it. And finally, that demon rolled up. That girl was uh, the one we were praying for. She was choking. That thing was coming out. And I was like, in the name of Jesus. I, I said, devil, I'm not playing with you. I'm standing in my authority. And you know who yep. I am, so I'm not going to play. And that girl rose up and looked at the girl that was standing behind me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And she was like, what? What? And the girl started running. Who put that demon in it? I said, listen. I said, hold up, Satan. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. I said, as a matter of fact, you, 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 you three, go sit down. Just plead the blood and we'll handle this. So we started, and then I went back. I said, now, nah, devil, let me deal with you. Somebody open the door because he's about to go. You, and you're not going to stay up in my house either. You're about to go. This is when we were doing the Bible study in my house. I said, in the name of Jesus, loose now and let her go. If you yes. say I'm going to beat you up with the blood, devil, loose now. And that thing went, pop, and that girl fell on the floor like something dead, just collapsed on the floor. She laid on the floor and she started vomiting and we got towels and stuff and cleaned her up. And then we just started praying a spirit of restoration over her because she'd yeah. been in that condition for a long time. Yeah. I'm telling you this because when your faith ain't right, don't try to contend with the devil. You don't have enough faith to deal with the devil. The sons of Sceva, they, they wrote a story about the sons of Sceva. They're trying to deal with the devil because they see the apostles dealing with the devils, but the apostles had the faith and was operating in the authority of the name of Jesus. See, anytime you're dealing with a demon, anytime you're dealing with a situation, anytime when you're dealing with finances, there's only one name that is above finances, one name that is above every name, one name that is above healing, one name that is above brokenness, one name that is above above the supremacy, and that is the name of Jesus. So it is at the name of Jesus that this thing, your faith in the name of Jesus, that's an unstoppable combination. That makes you unstoppable. If you find yourself struggling, come on, Man, start to look within. Start to look within. Lord, what is it? Because you cannot go to God and ask him what is and he not answer you. You can't. One last thing, and I want to just want to give it over to Pastor Zach because he's got some good stuff he's going to share. Here's what the Lord said. You, if you're going to move the mountain, it's only going to move by faith. Come on. Even if it's little faith, it'll move. Come on. Mountains are represents problems, issues obstacles, hindrance, things that are difficult yeah. to deal with. Mountains represents things that cause you to fear. Yes, yes. A mountain can be a mountain of doubt. Yes. Always doubt. One Come way, on. one day you're here, one day yeah. you're here, one yeah. day you're saved, one day you're almost saved, yeah. one day you're like Jesus, one day you, you know, I'm just, it's the universe and you, you can't have all of these gods. You've got to be fixed Come on. On Jesus. On it's got to be yeah. one Lord, yeah. one faith, yeah. one baptism. It's one. Jesus. It's the oneness of God. Yeah. You can't have all of it and still have the power of Jesus yeah. to deal with your mountain. In order to deal with your mountain, and every one of us in here have a mountain yeah. that we yes. are dealing with. Yes. Everybody in here right now got a situation going on, a problem, yes. something that's bothering, yes. been bothering yes. you, something that's been difficult to deal with because it's the enemy's strategy to try to keep you down, yes. held yes. down and bound. All of us are dealing with Come something. Yes. All of us, if it's, yes. it could be mental, it could be emotional, it could be relational with people, it could be financial, it could be physical, whatever it is. Yes. It could be social, whatever it is. You are dealing with a mountain, and the only way you can deal with a mountain is by faith. Amen. 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 Lord said this. Jesus. Mountain moving faith is based not on what you can do, what you know. It's based upon the promises of God revealed mm-hmm. in his word. Come 
and by his spirit. Mm. That's what mountain moving faith. That mountain moving faith is what Pastor Rama had yesterday. Yes. Yes. Yes, the devil did. couldn't shake her. He couldn't take her down. Yes. Finally, he just had to leave her alone and go find some other stuff. <laughs> yes, he did. The Lord says this, you cannot be successful without faith. Mm -hmm. You can't be. You can't have any level of success without faith. Mm -hmm. It's going to take you believing in what God has said. Mm -hmm. You cannot be successful as long as you're in fear. Because mm -hmm. those two are conflicting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as you're in fear, you're never ever going to be able to utilize that faith you need to get the things mm -hmm. that you are capable of getting. Amen. You have capability in you. Amen. There's so much more in you. Yes. So much more right. to you. And the moment you realize that by faith, because the, the realization of faith comes, and you realize, wait a minute. <laughs> I've, been, I've been sitting around here waiting, and I can, I can get this done, God. Mm -hmm. You cannot be healed without faith. You cannot be blessed Amen. without faith. Amen. You cannot be loved Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes. Without wow. faith, because wow. faith works by love. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yes. Wow. If you believe you're whole, this the Lord said you, you can't act divided. Yeah. If you believe that you're loved, you can't act hateful. Mm. If you believe you have sound mindedness, then you can't act crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you believe you're rich, then don't act poor. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I believe, mm. therefore I speak. Mm -hmm. If I'm speaking anything else other than what I believe, I nullified what I believe. That's right. Yeah. So if I believed I'm loved and I'm acting hateful, mm. then I just nullified that which I believe. People want to be loved, but yet they act hateful. Right. Yeah. You you can only get that which you are what which you are emanating, which you are carrying. And faith grows. Luke 17, 20, 15, 17, verse 5. The disciples said to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are people that out there don't think that thinks you have all the faith you're going to need when you get saved. If that's true, then I could, I could only believe God still be believing God for a house. When you get saved, you believe God for tangibles. As you grow with God, you start yeah. to believe God for intangibles. Now a house is not that important to me as my destiny. I believe in God to write some books. That's going to take more than a house kind of faith. So faith increases. And as I turn it over to Pastor Zach, I just want you to be reminded to take hold of what you believe. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go to the, the book of Mark, chapter 11. Mark 11. And while you're going there, just quickly, mm -hmm. the story she was telling you about with the young lady in, in the wheelchair, what she didn't tell you that the pastor said it was the first time that the lady ever stood up. And she had been going there for years. Wow. And she stood for the first time yep. that Sunday morning. Wow. She had never Amen. stood before wow. coming to that church. Yes. So that's wow. going to tell you that's the power of faith. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. The power. Are, you, are you there? Yeah. Good. So stay there just for a minute. Let me tell you this here. In my theology class, my theology class, you, you should never ask a, you know, a question. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to ask one because in the Bible, in Genesis, right about chapter 3, when Adam sinned, God asked Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Now he wasn't asking because he didn't know. Come on, that's right. That's right. That's right. So this morning, I'm gonna ask you a question. Come on. Where is your faith? Amen. Is your faith connected to the source we talked about last week? Come on. Is it connected to the center? Uh-huh. Is it your focus? Is it connected to God Himself? Cause let's say we know that without faith, it is impossible to what? Please God. Please God. Yeah. So how is your faith working this morning? Come on. Yeah. Is it working by the word we just got? Amen. Come on. Are, are, are you believing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Are you believing? Yes. Yes. See, faith is more than just believing. Come on. Mm -hmm. Faith is acting. Acting yes. out. Yes. You just can't believe. Come on. 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 Come on.
I believe I'm going to get a car, a new car. <laughs> but would I give me a new car? No. I got to step out and act on that. Yes. I'm going to have to go down to the car lot yes. and make a deal. Uh-huh. Right? Mm -hmm. So faith is, is, is acting. Yes. Not just, just, just believing. Yes. See, oh, and, and I bet when we got this, we got a little sign up that says, faith start when we're in. Mm -hmm. I mean, faith begin when we're in. Uh -huh. So if you're worried today, release it. Amen. Because if you're, not, if you're worried, you're not in faith. Amen. If you say you believe something, you're worried about that, that's not faith. Right. Okay, are you there yet? Yes. yes. Okay, chapter 11 and Mark, let's go around about verse 22. All right. It says this, a very familiar scripture here. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, that's the word again, doubt, but believes that those things he says will be done. Yes. He will have whatever he says. Yes. Therefore, yes. I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them yeah. and you will have, have them. them. Amen. Believe. Amen. Believe. That's that word again. Believe. Mm -hmm. Believe. Believe. Mm -hmm. If you believe, if you believe, you will have them. Mm -hmm. But first, having faith, it took more than that. He said, speak to the mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, faith is also speaking. Yeah. So you got to speak what you want. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Now, we know we ain't talking about a real mountain. That, that, that's just a figure of speech he was saying, yeah. Yes. Because our mountain is many things. Amen. Your mountain could, could be finance. Mm -hmm. Your mountain could be bills. Mm -hmm. Your mountain could be your job. Yes. And any time you go to a mountain, it's steep and something's coming at you. Mm. For instance, check this out. Yesterday, we're going up this mountain, right? Oh, let me back up for a minute. Let me, let me go to Genesis chapter 22. You don't even go there. Mm -hmm. This is what God told Abraham. Abraham, take your son to a mountain. Mm -hmm. yep. To Mount Moriah. Yeah. Now, Abraham prepared this, right? He prepared an altar for his son, the wood and the fire. But what he did, he went in faith. But guess what? He asked questions. His mind, I guarantee you, he asked questions. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't just, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what God's going to do. I'm going, but I don't know what God's going to do. I'm going to take my son to this mountain because God said so. Yeah. This is my only son. Hold up. No, he had a son. He had Ishmael. He had a son, but this was a promised son. Yeah. So God, you're going to take my only son to the mountain? I'm going to take him there, and I'm going to lay an altar for him. And, um, and this, he tied him down too now. Yes, yes, he tied yes. him down. Right, now. Right. He tied him down that he could not get up. Uh -huh. yes. Then he took the knife that he had for sacrificial, right? And then he was going to kill his son. But then an angel, uh -huh. a voice from heaven came out. Yeah. Said, Abraham, I know you believe. Ha, huh. come on. For you have went this far. Yes. I know you believe God. Come on. Come on. Anything come on. you do to that distance. It shows your faith in God. Yes, it does. True. You didn't see that. But he went knowing that God would do something. And his son said, God, uh, Abraham, what, 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 hold up, hold up. Where is the sacrifice said? Come on. God will provide. Yeah. Yeah. And behind him, in the bush, bounce yeah. around. Yes. See, we have that type of faith. Yes. We have that type of faith. And don't doubt. And just go. And I'm talking about blind faith, people. Yeah. Right. When you have that type of faith and just go, God will work on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. He always works. Yeah. Anytime you talk about a mountain, mm -hmm. you talk about a challenge. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Moses went to a mountain. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, going up this mountain, I just believe mm -hmm. Moses had some problems going up to Mount Horeb yeah. to see God, right? To see that bush. Matter of fact, we saw a bush yesterday, but it wasn't burning. <laughs> I saw the burning bush. <laughs> And the wife so it's not burning. <laughs> so check this out. We're going up this mountain, right? And I'm getting these thoughts this morning. And God telling me, in, in your journey up a mountain, that's a challenge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. a challenge. Uh -huh. Now that's about what, 4.5 miles, I think? No, almost five. About five miles. Okay. So up this mountain, we'll journey up this hill, up this mountain, right? 
and there's rocks, there's uh -huh. dirt, and everything else. Ooh. Now, in your mind, mm -hmm. that your yeah. destination is to get to the peak of that mountain, uh -huh. to that rock. That's your destination, your mind, right? So your mind, you begin to start walking, and you probably get like maybe this third or fourth mile, and all the thing, it's all good. And then you go like the fifth or sixth mile. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you got things coming at you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about natural things, because we know things can occur, right? right? But these are spiritual things yeah. coming at you right now. Right. You tell your thoughts. Yeah. Tell you, well, you can't make that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You can't make that. Man, your, your knee is hurting. Uh -huh. Yeah. For me, my knee was paining. Yeah, you can't make that. Yeah. You got pain in your knee. That's, that's impossible, Zach, for you to go up that mountain. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the doors coming at you. Ooh, coming on. at you. Come coming on. at you. Coming at you. And God's speaking to you. Mm. He's speaking. See, it's that voice that speaks inside you, uh -huh. but it's connecting with not the natural man, but the natural man not knows the things of God. Come but it's connect with yes. the spiritual man, the which is here. Yes. And God speaks to your spiritual man, and your spiritual man speaks to your natural man. And say, I can do this. Yes. I can do all things That's and pray who strengthen me. That's so it. I can get to this hill. Yeah. I can get to the top of this hill. That's Why? It. Not because of what I see, but because of what I believe That's by it. faith. Yeah. I can get there. That's it. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So check yes. this out. Your mountain signifies celestial things. Mm. Here you go. Let me read this to you right quick. <coughs> what am I here? Where am I? Let me get it here. Let me get it. I'm sorry. Hey, mountain, here you go. Mountain may get in your path, but they are just they are just a pathway for you to get to your destination. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to your destination. Mm -hmm. Just know that. Mountain gonna come. Oh, yeah. and, and, right. and they push right. and, and you're dodging. And yeah. you and you're dodging. Yeah. Because I can't get to this mountain. I got things coming at me. They come, I got bills coming my way. Come on. I, I, I just got laid off this job. I don't, have, I don't have transportation. And all of these come your way. Yeah. And you try to dodge and dodge uh -huh. and dodge. But you can't dodge spiritual things, baby. You can't dodge spiritual come things because they're always going to come. Uh -huh. They come to elevate us. Hey, yeah. 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 They come to move us up yes. into a place where God told us yes. to go. Yes. They come to help us yes. be our destination. Yes. Faith is not nothing natural. 
Yeah. Right. Faith is right. supernatural. Right. It yeah. is supernatural. And faith is spiritual. Yeah. Right. Come on. That's why you can't get faith on your own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Understand that? That's Salvation good. by grace. Uh, come on. Come on. Yeah. Through faith. Come on. Yeah. That's that's the only way you get anything. Yes. Yeah. It's through that course. That's right? it. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. When we're walking in faith, Ooh. and faith is not blind, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's only blind that we have doubt. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Let me start again for you. It's only blind if we have doubt. Yeah, yeah. true. So we gonna have look. Yeah. If our walk is not easy because our enemy opposes our walk. Yes. Come on, right. yeah. yeah. And he's gonna bring everything he can. Yep. At us. Yep. But we gotta be geared up. Yeah, come on. We gotta put on the whole armor. Yeah. The whole armor. And be ready yes. for his chapters. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and believe that by faith that I can get through this challenge here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Believe by faith that I'm gonna get what I'm asking for. God, mm -hmm. Jesus. I believe by faith that God go open these doors for me and I'm yeah. gonna get this job that I'm asking for. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm not going to wish. Mm. Faith is not about wishing. Right. Yeah. right. If you wish, I'll get you a genie. Uh. <laughs> faith is about believing yeah. and exercising. Yeah. 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 It is faith in God himself. Yeah. 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 It is faith. The, the apostles, they had faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. They saw many signs. They saw many one, miracles. Mm -hmm. And they saw many works. But guess what? They still had a little bit on the unbelief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They still had a little doubt. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told them, he told them that. Oh, ye a little faith. Ye a little faith. Yeah. I have to pose this question once more before I end this here. Every time Jesus went with somebody, he already knew their faith. When he asked a question, he was connecting with their faith. Yeah. 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 He came to a level yeah. of what he worked. Mm -hmm. Come on. So anytime you, you have a little faith, you got big faith. Because anytime you call on Jesus, mm -hmm. he answers. Yes. yes. Amen. He, he answers because he meets you where you're at. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. So in order to move, mm -hmm. and, and in order to excel higher and higher, mm -hmm. our faith we have to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Amen. We can't stay in a certain place and expect to grow. Yes. Right? Right. So it's by faith going to push us. Sometimes we need somebody to push us. Yeah. I'm one of them. Yeah. yeah. So I, I need a little push to put, move me out. Mm -hmm. When I get that push, I can go. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I have to get it. Understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your faith at? What's your faith at? Are you here? Have you heard what the apostle said? Mm -hmm. Have you heard what I've said? Better yet, have you heard what God has said to you? Yes. 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 Because that's the most important question. Right. Yes. 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 We are just vessels. Thank you, Lord. We are just vessels that stand before you. Thank you, Jesus. Giving and releasing what God has given to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's our prayer that you guys begin to see. Let me ask yourself the question. What, what's my faith level at? Where am I in my faith life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Say what God says. Amen. You say what God said, yes. you will never go wrong. Right. You say what God said, your faith will always yes. travel yes. upward and not downhill. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 To bring supernatural transformation into impossible situations. Yes, yes. We're qualified to do that. Yes. To bring, we are qualified as believers to bring supernatural transformation into impossible situations. Supernatural transformation into impossible situations. Qualified, yeah. Qualified means you have the ability 
to do it because God gave it to you. Come on. Yes. The one thing I want you guys to know about all of this message in faith is that as you begin to really believe God, you're going to see the fruit of it. Uh. As you really believe God, Amen. every time I really Amen. believe God for something, I saw the fruit of it. Yeah. Yeah. As you really believe God for something, you're going to see the fruit of your faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of your faith yeah. is the manifestation of what you believed. Yeah. Okay? Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We're going to uh, pray. Thank you.